So in these videos, we're going to talk about substrates of the kinase, AKT. AKT is a kinase, phosphorylates many substrates, um, over 100. So we're going to talk about those substrates. And again, the PI3 kinase AKT pathway, very important regulator of cell growth, cell division, cell cycle, apoptosis, protein synthesis, glucose metabolism, differentiation, many cellular processes are regulated by the PI3 kinase AKT pathway. So we're going to learn about some of the AKT substrates. Now I should say that these substrates aren't always phosphorylated by AKT in every single cell in the body. There are other things that can regulate all these proteins, but AKT can regulate these proteins under many conditions. But again, not, not all conditions do these proteins get uh, phosphorylated or regulated by AKT but we'll introduce, uh, in general, some AKT substrates in this video and the processes that they're involved in. So, for example, let's start with cell survival or apoptosis, so programmed cell death. And we know that when cells are in G1, that AKT is typically not phosphorylated and therefore not in an active state. It's a kinase, but it's not active. And then when cells are getting a signal to go through the cell cycle, that AKT is typically phosphorylated on serine 473 and threonine and 308 that was covered in the previous video. And this phosphorylation helps trigger the activation of AKT's kinase activity. So then it can phosphorylate its substrates. So now let's introduce some substrates and the effect that phosphorylation has on those substrates. So these substrates are going to be proteins that are involved in apoptosis. And I've got a whole series of videos uh, that will talk about later in the course um, on apoptosis and how apoptosis is regulated. But for now, we're going to introduce these proteins and we're not going to talk about their function other than that they play a role in apoptosis and they promote apoptosis. They are pro-apoptotic proteins. We'll learn about anti-apoptotic proteins, pro-apoptotic proteins, how they regulate uh, apoptosis in the cell. But for now, we're just going to introduce these proteins uh, called bad backs. BIM, and an enzyme called caspase-9. And again, we'll get into all their real functions later. But for now, they're just pro-apoptotic proteins. When they are active, they will promote apoptosis. They can promote apoptosis. I shouldn't say they will. They can promote apoptosis. So in uh, cells that are in G1, um, these, uh, so I said these proteins are substrates of AKT. AKT can phosphorylate them. But in this state, AKT is not active. So in this state, AKT is not phosphorylated and it is not phosphorylating these proteins. So in this state, when these proteins are not phosphorylated by AKT, these proteins can trigger apoptosis. Doesn't mean they will trigger apoptosis. It means they can actually, they can activate if an apoptotic signal is received by the cell, if there's some cellular stress, for example. So um, let's talk about what happens when AKT actually phosphorylates these proteins. So when cells are getting a signal to go through the cell cycle or in many human cancer cells where AKT is phosphorylated and active, that is going to trigger the phosphorylation of all of these proteins. When these proteins are phosphorylated by AKT, that inactivates these proteins. So these phosphorylation events inactivate proteins. In previous videos, we learned about phosphorylating proteins activates them. But now we're learning phosphorylating these proteins inactivates them. And recall from the video on kinases and phosphorylation, what does phosphorylation do? Phosphorylation can regulate the activity of a protein. It doesn't have to activate it. It can inactivate it. Putting that large negative phosphate group on uh, one of the hydroxyls in an amino acid, that phosphate group can change the activity of a protein. It can inactivate the activity of that protein. So all of these proteins here, BAD, BAC, BIM, caspase 9, when those proteins are phosphorylated by AKT, they become inactive, which means that they can no longer trigger apoptosis. So this is how P50, I'm sorry, this is how AKT can inhibit apoptosis. It can have an anti-apoptotic effect by keeping these pro-apoptotic proteins inactive. And I know that's a lot of sort of like pro and inhibiting and activating. So 
you got to keep track of all of these. It's actually, it is, it's complicated, but as long as you understand that these pr proteins promote apoptosis, and when AKT phosphorylates them, it inhibits their pro-apoptotic function. So that's one way AKT um, inhibits apoptosis in human cancer cells. And that's one reason cancer, human cancer cells can be resistant to apoptosis by natural means. All right, so those are some AKT substrates. Let's introduce another AKT substrate. So here's a protein I'm going to introduce uh, called FOXO. Uh, sometimes it is known as FKHR. Uh, it's a transcription factor. Actually, there's a whole family of transcription factor called FOXO transcription factors, but we're going to talk about the one that's commonly known as FKHR. So you know what a transcription factor is. A transcription factor is a protein that binds the promoter of a gene and uh, turns on that gene, right? Transactivates that gene. So you'll get gene expression. Okay, well, AKT regulates this transcription factor by phosphorylating it. Well, what does phosphorylating do? Does phosphorylating FOXO activate it or inactivate it? Great question, I'm gonna tell you. So I'll tell you that when AKT is not phosphorylating FOXO or FKHR, this transcription factor can be in an active state. So not phosphorylated by AKT can be active. So if it's active, it must be able to bind promoters. Let me move out of the way here. Uh, when FOXO binds promoters, it turns genes on. And I'll tell you what kind of genes that FOXO turns on. Um, it can turn on many genes, but I'll tell you it can turn on pro apoptotic genes, a gene called BIM, another gene called FASL or FAS ligand. It can also turn on cell cycle arrest genes such as P27, which is a CDK inhibitor, which we will cover later, and there are later videos on that. So, in, when cells are in G1, AKT, not phosphorylated, not active, so it's not phosphorylating FOXO or FKHR, and it allows FOXO to be active and binding promoters, turning genes on, which keep the cell in G1, which um, also can allow the cell to trigger apoptosis if something is wrong with the cell. Now, in uh, when cells get a pro-growth signal, a growth factor, for example, so it tells them to go through the G1, or in many human cancers, um, what happens? Well, AKT is phosphorylated and active, which means they can now phosphorylate FOXO, and I'm gonna draw here a tyrosine at position two and a serine at position 256. Those are the sites of phosphorylation on uh, FKHR slash FOXO by AKT. So when AKT phosphorylates this protein, what does it do? Well, it, when you phosphorylate FOXO, when you're AKT and you phosphorylate FOXO, that sends it to the cytoplasm. Now, the DNA is in the nucleus. Now FOXO is in the cytoplasm. Guess what? FOXO can't activate, can't function because it's in the, it's in the cytoplasm. The genes are in the nucleus. So relocating uh, FKHR or FOXO into the cytoplasm keeps it in an inactive form. And if FOXO is inactive, then it cannot be turning on BIM or FAS ligand or P27. And so it helps inhibit pro-apoptotic signal, so inhibit apoptosis, and also inhibit cell cycle arrest, so that allows cells to go through the cell cycle. So these are, again, these are two ways that AKT can regulate apoptosis and regulate the cell cycle. Either it can phosphorylate proteins directly that regulate apoptosis, like we saw on the previous slide, or it can phosphorylate transcription factors that turn on pro-apoptotic genes or that regulate the cell cycle. So AKT can work uh, affecting gene transcription by targeting transcription factors. So FOX is one transcription factor AKT targets directly, and we're gonna see a later that AKT can indirectly affect transcription factors. All right. Um, let's talk about how AKT regulates P53. So P53, uh, if you know, it is a major tumor suppressor protein, uh, the guardian of the genome. And we're going to talk about P53 later in the course. There's a whole unit on P53, and I have a lot of videos on P53. So P53 is a uh, transcription factor that can turn on um, cell cycle arrest genes, and trigger the apoptosis of the cell, All right? So it's the guardian of the genome. 
and it can detect many types of cellular stress. So um, AKT can regulate P53 by phosphorylating the regulator of P53 called MDM2. So let's introduce this protein called MDM2. MDM2 is a ubiquitin ligase. And so we're not going to go into detail here on what a ubiquitin ligase is because there's uh, we're going to talk about that later in the course. And I have separate videos on ubiquitilation and how that regulates proteins. But uh, MDM2 is a type of enzyme called a ubiquitin ligase, which will attach ubiquitin proteins to another protein. So you're pre conjugating two proteins, that's why it's called the ligase. And ubiquitilation regulates protein stability because ubiquitilation of a protein sends it to the proteasome where it can become destroyed. And again, that's a brief introduction to uh, ubiquitilation, but we're going to cover that much deeper later in the course and in later videos. So uh, I can tell you here in this video that the AKT protein, again, cells in G1, uh, AKT protein not phosphorylated, not active. This protein MDM2, when it is not phosphorylated by AKT, it is in an inactive state. Okay, So if it's inactive, that means that P53 will not be acted upon by MDM2. We'll see that on the next uh, part of the slide here. And P53 can trigger cell cycle arrest and apoptosis if it needed to. And again, P53 is a lot more complicated, so I've got a whole series of videos out of the way there. So you see that P53 can respond to a lot of cellular stresses, uh, allowing the cell to stop the cell cycle and trigger apoptosis. But we're gonna see that again in later videos, how that can happen. But what I want to get across here is how AKT can regulate P53 by phosphorylating MDM2. So I'll show you here that one of the substrates of AKT is in fact MDM2. When AKT phosphorylates MDM2, and I've written here that serine 166, that can activate MDM2. So in the previous slides, when AKT was phosphorylating proteins, those proteins were inactive. Now AKT is phosphorylating this protein, it's active. And that's okay. That's absolutely okay. Putting a phosphate group on a protein, that negative charge, just putting in a phosphate group, you don't know if it's activating or inactivating that protein. So it really depends on where that charge is, what it does to the three-dimensional structure of the protein, the protein-protein interactions. So you really just have to be told and you have to do the research and then you have to find out what the phosphorylation do, does. So I'm telling you here, when AKT phosphorylates MDM2, it activates the enzyme activity of MDM2. So what is MDM2? It's a ubiquitin ligase. So I'm gonna move over here now. Um, when AKT phosphorylates and activates MDM2, MDM2 is now active. It can bind P53, it can transfer ubiquitins to P53, and it can destroy P53. And again, we'll go much deeper into that regulation later in the course, uh, and there are more videos on that um, if you were interested in that now. But we're not going to go into too much into detail there. But suffice it to say, now that P53 is destroyed, then those cell cycle arrest genes are uh, not being turned on by P53. Um, the proapitosis genes are not being turned on by P53. And again, this is keeping cells going through the cell cycle and keeping them in an anti-apoptotic state. It's inhibiting apoptosis. So uh, AKT can regulate the cell cycle, it can regulate apoptosis by phosphorylating and regulating the activity of all these proteins. So I've given you just a brief overview of some of the AKT substrates, like MDM2, like FOXO, uh, there, uh, BAD, BAC, BIM, and caspase 9. So for all those substrates, you should know what those proteins do, what their function is, and what AKT does to these proteins when it phosphorylates it. Does AKT activate these proteins when it phosphorylates them, or does it inactivate them? And then what is the result of when these proteins are active or inactive? So that's some, that's, those are some AKT substrates. There'll be another video that covers a few more AKT substrates, such as GSK3-beta um, and how 
GS and how uh, PKT regulates protein synthesis through mTOR. So that's our next video.